Welcome to this online gathering at St. Michael's Uniting Church in Melbourne. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, wherever you've come from, wherever you're going to, whatever you believe, whatever you do not believe, you are welcome. Today we acknowledge that the land on which St. Michael stands is the sovereign and unceded country of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. We pay our respects to their elders past and present who have cared for this country since its creation. And we commit ourselves to working for a more just sharing of resources and power between first and second peoples in Australia. And as we gather with people from around Australia and from other countries, I invite you to acknowledge the first people on whose land you live. Happy St. Michael's Day. Welcome St. Michael's members and friends, online companions, and welcome to anyone who is joining us for the first time. At St. Michael's, we engage deeply with the Christian tradition in open-minded and open-hearted ways, expressing spirituality that opens us to the sacred and connects us to the human community and to our precious planet home. If you are watching this on a Sunday morning, you're always welcome to join St. Michael's Zoom Cuppa at 11.15. We gather as a whole group, and then we have about a 15 minute chat about a question or idea posed by our host. And then we go into breakout groups with a small group of other people, maybe sort of five or six people in a group before coming back together. Just half an hour, but you are very welcome. Information about joining is in the e-news and on our website. St. Michael's Day is a significant day for celebrating our community, treasuring our traditions and dreaming our future. The theme for St. Michael's Day in 2021 is lament, healing and hope. It recognises that we are celebrating our second St. Michael's Day in lockdown during a time of global pandemic. A year ago, we were starting to look forward to, the, to a return to COVID normal and to the end of a very long lockdown. As Victorians, we understood that the sacrifices that we were making to contain the virus were for the benefit of our neighbours and indeed for all Australians. It still made sense to encourage one another with the words, we are all in this together. This year though, we find ourselves in a much more fractious and fractured landscape. Frustration has turned to anger, and anger has sometimes turned to violence. There are better ways to respond to terribly difficult decisions and understandably intense feelings. Naming them in lament, remembering what brings us healing and wholeness, giving thanks for vaccination that a year ago was just a far off dream, and claiming in faith that even in the midst of this, there is reason to hope. We are not alone. The spirit is with us in all we are called to be and do, and we are beloved and blessed. Ours is a faith that like the spirit is everywhere. It's temple all space, it's shrine the good heart, it's creed all truth. It's ritual works of love, it's profession of faith, living well and seeking justice and abundant life for all. So celebrating our living faith tradition, ever ancient, ever new, let us sing together, song of faith that sings forever. So 
prayer of awareness is the Mingari prayer. Let us pray. Restore in us a peaceful mind, a strengthened spirit. Restore to us a new pathway, a new hope and a new purpose. Restore for us the courage to let go of what is past, the readiness and strength to walk toward the future. Restore in us a union with the energy of this sacred place and a union with the soul of the universe. As we touch the rock, help us to draw strength from the stone. Giving thanks for the memory of Jesus and the tradition that shapes and sustains us, we pray together. Ground of all being, Mother of life, Father of the universe, your name is sacred beyond speaking. May we know your presence. May your longings be our longings in heart and in action. May there be food for the human family today and for the whole earth community. Forgive us the falseness of what we have done as we forgive those who are untrue to us. Do not forsake us in our time of conflict, but lead us into new beginnings. For the light of life, the vitality of life, and the glory of life are yours now and forever. Amen. As I offer you words of peace, I invite you to share peace with others in your household and extend that peace into the community beyond those that you know and love. There is grace in the midst of life, grace that finds us and frees us, grace that liberates and leads us to love. May the peace of divine presence be with you. Amen. Listen for the Spirit speaking through our sacred stories, a reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 38 to 50. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to stop her because she was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop her, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the community of heaven with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. For the dangerous memory of Jesus challenging us and calling us to be at peace in community, we give thanks. 
in the name of the Spirit, calling us, challenging us, changing us. This week, the words of an old familiar hymn came to my mind. It was the last verse of Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Breathe through the heats of our desire, thy coolness and thy balm. Let sense be dumb, let flesh retire. Speak through the earthquake, wind and fire, O still small voice of calm. On Wednesday, Melbourne experienced the strongest earthquakes since white settlers first arrived in Victoria. For some people, the earthquake was a tipping point in an already distressing time, as Melbourne's COVID case numbers hit an all-time high and violent anti-lockdown, anti-vaccination rioters took over the streets for several days. Perhaps the earthquake was a symbol of how little control we have. On this St. Michael's Day, we yearn to hear the Spirit's word in our world, speaking through the heated chaos of earthquake, wind and fire and plague and everything else you can imagine. We long to hear the divine call, to feel the sacred's breath. And to do that, we must intentionally create in our lives places of stillness and calm that foster in ourselves an openness of heart. And one of the ways that we do that is by gathering together as the people of St. Michael's. In the service today, as we slow down together, we will hear stories from our community, from Jana and Anthony, who have each recorded personal reflections on lament, healing and hope, and Lyndall, Sandy and Pamela, who will share reflections on the contact and care conversations that led to the curation of this beautiful illustrated booklet for St. Michael's Day. As the pandemic has dragged on and on, I notice that many people have found it hard to maintain their intent, their good intent to keep positive. It seems that all the mindfulness and well-being strategies in the world aren't enough to fix what ails us individually or collectively. Valuing lament is wisdom that comes to us from the ancient Jewish and Christian traditions. The psalmists railed at Yahweh, sometimes at great length, before hope could be recovered and praise offered. So our stories this St. Michael's Day start with lament for a broken world, for a fractured society, for ourselves as we live in ways that we would not have chosen. It is only when we can name the hard stuff that we can move to giving thanks for what is healing in this time, for kindness and connection that have sustained us so profoundly that we can once again hold on to hope hope for ourselves, for the well-being of our city, and for the healing of the earth community. St. Michael's Day is about what has been, the stories of each of our lives and the stories that we have shared. It is also about our shared future, about who we want to be as a church community. The ancient wisdom of the tradition comes to us in the dangerous memory of Jesus and his friends today recorded in a strange text from Mark's Gospel. Previously, Jesus had challenged the disciples who were jockeying for the power and privilege of being the greatest in their community. Now they are trying to define who is in and who is out, but Jesus will have none of this. If there are others who are healing in his name, if they are healing, if they are embodying love, then Jesus says they are for us. They are with us. And then Jesus brings a child to the center, prioritizing the safety of the little ones. In graphic hyperbolic language, he is clear that anyone who would hurt a child or a vulnerable person will be exposed and face the consequences. The passage uses the same metaphor as Paul in the letter to the Corinthians. The body is the community. To be part of the community, we must act in, with integrity in relation to the other members of the body community, especially towards those who have less power than we do. The passage ends with Jesus talking about the salt of the disciples, the qualities of the disciples 
that would preserve and enhance their community. From all that Jesus said as he journeyed the way to Jerusalem with his disciples, it is clear that their saltiness involves mutuality and equality in relationships, giving of themselves for others, reaching out and accepting all the people around them. Jesus tells them to have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Jesus tells us, have faith in yourselves, be at peace with one another. The Reverend Dr. Sally Douglas, who is minister at Richmond Uniting Church, has recently published a book in which she reflects on the church as salt, no longer the church triumphant, but the church as salt. There are many references in the stories of Jesus to salt. It is a powerful ancient metaphor illuminating for us what it is to be the church in a post-triumphal era. The processions, the drama, the crowds, the sounds of past St Michael's Day were wonderful, I'm told. But now it seems the Spirit is calling us to new ways of being that church, being the church that will enable us to be a blessing in a different world than the one we occupied before the pandemic. The people who are raging in the streets are seeking someone to blame. God knows we've all sought someone to blame over the past year. They have a narrative that justifies anger being turned into violence. As a church, we can stand back and judge them, or we could offer something into our fractured social space, not some grand plan solution, but something small that like salt can change the taste of the world and sustain the hope that the people of our city and the people of our world might live together in peace. In the midst of tumultuous times, as people grounded and shaped by Christian tradition, living within a story of meaning that has been shaped and shared over countless generations, we can recognize our lack of control and still foster hope. Not a hope that looks away from suffering, but a compassionate hope that both acknowledges our lack of control and insists that there will be a future beyond the pandemic, that believes that while we cannot control everything, we can have faith in a future that we will shape together as the Spirit speaks to us in a still, small voice of calm. Amen.
The Contemporary Reading is a Blessing by Jan Richardson, titled Blessing of Salt and Fire. And so, in this season, may we give ourselves to the fire that shows us what is elemental and sacramental, that reveals what remains after all that does not have substance or savour falls away. May we turn our eyes, our ears, our hands to the beauty for which we were formed and bear with grace the patterns that blossom upon us who live salted and singed. For wisdom that was in the beginning, for wisdom that invites and inspires, for wisdom revealed in all creation, we give thanks. Yearning for connection that honours interdependence, let us sing together, we are not our own. with St Michael's through the UCA Just Act team as a facilitator of a program that sought to learn what people hoped for in their communities and for their country. Not being a person of faith, I showed up equally keen and hesitant, yet convinced that if any community would show hope, then surely it would be one grounded in a creative source greater than itself. And St Michael's did just this. Within our difficult times, I found a community holding strong even while adapting to change. Maintaining a spiritual space of acceptance and welcome to all, com all comers, including myself. It is my hope for St Michael's that this is maintained no matter how much more change is due to come our way. UCA has in fact figured in my work for some time. I find it active and influential in fields like disability, disability, precarious work, modern slavery, and mental health. I volunteered for Lifeline and learned that Lifeline is also by UCA. I was astonished, even while truly by now, I should know to expect the UCA to back those struggling with hopelessness. 
Earlier this year, the opportunity arose for me to work in combating modern slavery in supply chains, a field in which the UCA acts nationally. On hearing this, a classmate at my theological college told me, you really go for the darkness. It's a curious kind of compliment, but I understood where it was coming from. I heard in it the challenge that any wicked problem presents us, the kind of problem for which every best effort seems to bring on more consequences and so much so that hopelessness can creep in. Many do struggle for how the pandemic shapes their present days and will shape every foreseeable day. Yet hope depends upon its dark counterpart. We don't get one without the other, meaning darkness is an opportunity. I've learned this time and again through my contact with UCA communities that have always shown up in the darkness. It showed me that hope is a choice that we may refuse to abandon. Darkness offers to borrow from the writer Kurt Vonnegut not only hope, yet also the gratitude of others and unshakable self-respect.
Lament, healing, hope. I'm very honoured, humbled and grateful that Margaret has asked me to share this reflection with you on this St Michael's Day. For me, this has been a year truly encompassing the themes of lament, healing and hope. I'm not intrinsically given to lamentation. I'm an Anglo-Celtic, white, middle-class, middle-aged male. I'm an only child. My parents were loving and devoted, but not given to expressing emotions openly. This was reinforced by my old boy's Catholic school, and especially my training as a lawyer. And of course, in my childhood and youth, I discovered an apparently good reason to hide my feelings. I had a huge, overwhelming, shameful secret. I'm gay. So I learned to be ashamed and to hide. I wasn't even aware I was doing it most of the time. It was simply the way I was. I kept calm and carried on. That's a good poster or coffee mug, but it's not great life advice. Even when I came out as gay in my 20s and was um, apparently comfortable with my own sexuality, I wasn't comfortable with the emotions and vulnerability that came with it. It wasn't until my sixth decade in the past few years that I eventually began to lament properly. It took the AIDS crisis, the death of too many friends, the death of both of my parents, the end of a 20 year relationship, unmet career expectations, increasingly compulsive and addictive behaviours on my own part, and the generally desperate state of the world to finally penetrate the carapace I had constructed around myself. The healing I required has begun over roughly the past two years. My life became increasingly unmanageable. I became more and more isolated and dependent on compulsive sex, alcohol and other substances. The lockdowns in 2020 brought all of this to a head. I was in short, a hot mess. My healing began with several acts of kindness and courage. A close friend, alarmed at my increasingly erratic behaviour and clearly diseased state, persisted in asking me what was wrong. He would not be fobbed off with my platitudinous answers. So eventually I told him. His response was overwhelmingly kind, loving and unconditional. In the break between lockdown numbers one and two in mid 2020, which seems so long ago now, the gyms reopened and I briefly returned to seeing my personal trainer. He too noticed I wasn't traveling at all well and inquired what was up. Again, I somehow found the courage to be honest and he expressed love and concern again. He had another client who had faced the same demons and he put us in contact. As a result, in November 2020, I was on one of the first flights from Melbourne to Sydney and spent some weeks by the sea in rehab. My recovery had begun and it continues. St Michael's has been an important part of it. This brings me to hope. My personal hopes have changed. Less material, much more spiritual and based on personal growth, service and community. That is also my hope for St Michael's. The gifts that you've offered me during this year, a rediscovery of the sacred love and light I experienced at church as a child, but without the shame, rigidity and judgment that then accompanied it, have already been among the greatest of my life. I share hope too for our community, our city, Australia and the wider world. Despite the calamities that have visited us this week, from increased militarism, hatred and violence in our streets, even those streets themselves literally shaking and roiling around and under us, these are in fact hopeful times. The heroism and unselfishness of so many attract less headlines than the hate and violence, but they are much more prevalent. We have a rare opportunity not to return to, nor not to, return to normal, but to seek a better, more just, loving and sustainable version of it. I've always loved Tennyson and especially the final lines of Ulysses, which evoke classical heroism, but speak to our times too. The lights begin to twinkle from the rocks. The long day wanes. The slow moon climbs. The deep moans round with many voices. Come, my friends, tis not too late to seek a newer world. Push off and sitting well in order, smite the sounding furrows. For my purpose holds to sail beyond the sunset and the baths of all the western stars 
until I die. It may be that the gulfs will wash us down. It may be that we shall touch the happy isles and see the great Achilles whom we knew. Though much is taken, much abides. And though we are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven, that which we are, we are. One equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will, to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Happy St Michael's Day. Our prayers of thanksgiving and solidarity for compassion, justice, and peace. Let us pray. Through the life and teachings of Jesus, we are shown the way to live and the ways of love. In gratitude, we acknowledge the gifts of scientists who have created vaccines and the tireless efforts of health workers who have distributed them to millions of people worldwide, enabling us to reconnect with one another and rebuild our world. We give thanks for the protection that vaccines bring to the vulnerable and to people who are not able to be vaccinated. We pray for the peace of the world. We pray that nations will exercise love instead of war, that the resources that are needed for life will be shared justly, so that there is food, shelter, education, just employment, and health care, including vaccines, for all. We pray that in the time of pandemic, our government and the governments of all nations will act with justice and compassion. As we are free to lament the suffering and the pain of the pandemic, we pray for healing of our spirits and the healing of the earth and for hope to carry us into the next stage of our life together. We pray for peace among us and within us. Grant blessing to each one and a sense of companionship, even though we are apart. Bless those who do essential work sustaining communities in lockdown, especially healthcare workers who care for the sick and the dying. Bless the homes where we dwell as we wait for safe reopening of our church and our communities. May we be strong in trust and full of hope. And in silence, let us pray for the earth and its people, for particular people, places and situations known to us where compassion and justice and healing are needed. In the many names of the sacred, we pray. And now let us pray together a prayer for the city and a prayer for the church. Renew your people, God, and renew our life in this place. Give us a new spirit of unity with all who follow Christ and a new spirit of love toward all people. Bless the city in which we live, that it may be a place where honest dealing good government, the desire for beauty and the care for others flourish. Bless this church that what we know of your will may become what we do and what we believe, the strong impulse of our worship and work. Amen. On this St. Michael's Day, we celebrate being the church in our gathering together in person or online in sharing our stories and finding our strength as a compassionate community of justice-seeking friends. This week, our offerings will be shared with two organisations that have provided food relief throughout the pandemic, the CAN Community Support Agency at the Church of All Nations Uniting Church in Carlton and Food Bank Victoria. 
If you would like to make a donation, you can do so through St. Michael's office or website, or information on giving directly to these organisations is included in our e-news and in the order of service. In gratitude, we dedicate the gifts given to support people facing food insecurity during the pandemic. Let us pray together. Spirit of life and love, receive our offering. Guide those who use it, that it may help to bring fullness of life, inclusive community, support for people who are struggling, and relief to people who live in need and long for justice and compassion. Amen. The theme for St Michael's Day 2021, Lament, Healing and Hope, emerged from many conversations, first among members of the Church Council, and then among some members of the Contact and Care Network and the people with whom they have been conversing and connecting over the past 18 months. I've asked Church Councillor Lyndall O'Brien, who's Chair of the Contact and Care Committee, and Sandy Foster and Pamela Blood, who are members of the Contact and Care Network, to speak about their experience of the St Michael's Day project. Linda, would you like to begin? Yes, it was a privilege to get in touch with the contact people from our contact and care team to ask them if they were able to speak with the people in their group to obtain their thoughts about our St Michael's Day theme. When the contact people got back to me with the outcomes of all their conversations, it was most evident that many of them had felt so very privileged to have had these conversations. Sandy, would you like to speak about your experiences? Thanks, Linda. I loved the stories and I felt drawn closer to the participants who were describing their experiences of COVID and lockdowns. I also enjoyed reusing the research process that I had formed some years ago for gathering stories together into one, one narrative. More or less everybody began with a lament about the difficulties of COVID before they could clear space for the stories of kindness and community. There were so many lovely stories of connection and care. I was filled with a sense of gratitude for our home and the St Michael's community that we are part of and also for the wonderful health services that we are blessed with in Melbourne. And now Pamela. Well looking back over these past 18 months of pandemic and lockdowns I can say that the journey that I've been on with St Michael's people has been inspirational for me. We were all bewildered at the beginning. We didn't know what to expect or what was expected of us. But as the isolation began to take its effect on us, our lives began to change. We were at times lonely, fearful, angry and helpless. And separation from our families was hurting us. The loss of loved ones was devastating. And as we shared these deep things of our hearts, it took our relationships to a different level, a deeper level, and that has been a rich blessing for me. But as time has gone on and we're coming to the end of this year, things have begun to change. We are rising. We are weary of lockdowns, but we know what to do now. And we are hanging in there but looking forward to a life post-COVID, a different life, but one we are truly ready for. Thank you all so much for sharing your experience of this project. And I'm so glad that it can be shared with the St. Michael's community in the booklet that we have curated and created uh, that shares what you learned and um, shares the emerging themes of kindness and connectedness and community that are what we value about St Michael's and what we realise matters most in our lives. So thank you all so much for being part of it.
as we leave this sacred time, may the mystery of God enfold us. May the wisdom of God uphold us. May the fragrance of God be around us. May the brightness of God surround us. May the wonder of God renew us. May the loving of God flow through us. May the peace of God deeply move us. And may the moving of God bring us peace. Amen. Thank you.